In the last episode of InsideTheHype.tv, researchers in a Canadian laboratory tested 22 different natural compounds against a well-known enemy of the honeybees, the Varroa mites. This was a bold move, as most research funding is typically allocated to synthetic molecules. Out of these 22 compounds, four came up on top, thymol, oregano oil, clove oil, and menthol. These proved to be highly effective natural solutions against varroa mites with relatively low toxicity to honeybees. And they significantly outperformed fluvalinate, a synthetic pesticide commonly used in beekeeping operations. If you missed the video, you can find the link in the description. However, it is important to note that these molecules were studied under laboratory conditions with topical application only and you might not believe the results when the same research group decided to test some of the natural compounds under realistic field conditions using an application method that many beekeepers like to use. If you remember my last video, the researchers knew from a previous study that two natural compounds, oregano oil and clove oil, were very effective at killing varroa mites under laboratory conditions but were never tested in full honeybee colonies before. Can these two natural oils be effective against varroa mites in realistic field conditions? A full apiary was set up for the experiment. A group of honeybee colonies received oxalic acid, another natural treatment well known from beekeepers, delivered inside the hives using cardboard. Another group of hives received a special mixture of oregano oil and clove oil delivered inside the colonies using absorbent pads. A third group of colonies received the big surprise you will see later in this video. And a fourth group of colonies received no mite treatment at all. And then they followed these colonies for several weeks and quantified the mites following the bottom boards of these colonies. When the researchers looked at the effectiveness of oxalic acid, they got numbers that were not exactly what some beekeepers were reporting. Using the impregnated cardboard with oxalic acid inside honeybee colonies for four weeks, the researchers found that 75% of the mites were dead at the end of the experiment. This is not bad based on some reports I heard directly from beekeepers in the United States. However, in this case, each colony, based on the recipe used, ends up with 5 grams of oxalic acid slowly released during these four weeks of treatment, which is an illegal dose in the United States. The results from the natural oils we were all waiting for were, to put the mildly, disappointing. With an efficacy of only around 55%, the results didn't come close to the 100% efficacy found in the previous laboratory study. More concerning, the results were very close to the levels of mites found in the colonies with no treatment at all. Hold on, something must be wrong here. We know for a fact from the previous study that most of the mites died in the presence of oregano oil and clove oil. It is true that most results from laboratory studies can't be fully observed in established honeybee colonies in the field, and many beekeepers consider laboratory studies a waste of time and money. However, the reality is that these laboratory studies, when done correctly, are very important and can tell us a story that we cannot see by observing the colonies as a whole. In the eyes of the scientists, they know, because of the laboratory study, that oregano oil and clove oil kill mites. The lack of results from the experiments in the colonies only means one thing, the two oils were not reaching the mites using the absorbent pads. The researchers then hypothesized that the absorbent pads were not the ideal delivery method for these oils and decided to test something else. Using electric vaporizers to constantly release the oregano oil only, as shown in this picture right here, resulted in an efficacy of around 95%. This indeed serves as an excellent illustration of how the process of scientific inquiry unfolds. It's akin to solving a complex puzzle where each experiment, each question answered, represents a piece slowly falling into place. The purpose of each experiment isn't to solve the entire puzzle at once, but to systematically isolate and understand individual variables. Over time, these small yet significant discoveries build upon each other, gradually revealing the bigger picture. Have the researchers solved the big puzzle here? Do we have a new alternative to synthetic pesticides for controlling varroa mites? I believe this study has revealed a new path to explore. 
It is definitely a strong result showing a 95% efficacy against varroa mites. However, I'll be interested in seeing further experiments under different environmental conditions to confirm the results. It will also be beneficial to observe the long-term effects of oregano oil on the colony and last but not least, additional experiments examine the impact of oregano oil on the honeybee queen health. A common mistake beekeepers often make is assuming that any scientific article published in the news is accurate and ready for practical implementation. In today's world, where news companies compete for attention, we must approach scientific news with caution. These companies may distort a story to grab attention, which is crucial for their own survival. As previously stated, each scientific article is a small but crucial part of a larger puzzle. We can only determine whether certain results apply to beekeeping when beekeepers begin legally testing these findings and evaluating the outcomes in their own unique circumstances. Until then, let's maintain an open mind and continue the progress using the scientific method. For now, watch this video right here to learn more about bees, check out the video description for more information about this publication and ways you can support this independent work. Thanks for watching, inside the hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.